The Mayor of London has arrived in India as part of a six-day tour to strengthen ties between the country and our capital. Sadiq Khan had one clear message for the people of Mumbai this morning. London is open. Our political correspondent Simon Harris is travelling with him. If you want to be mobbed in Mumbai, find yourself a Bollywood star. These were the scenes when Sadiq Khan joined actor and football club owner Ranbir Kapoor. The event, a junior tournament. The result, chaos on the pitch as young fans surrounded their idol, the actor, not the mayor. I'm really happy that uh, uh, Mr. Sadiq is, is here and he is supporting this. I think that shows a lot of support, not just to this initiative, but to the city of Mumbai uh, and to our community. The mayor was here to announce the winners of a competition for four youngsters to spend 10 days training with QPR in West London. But this is primarily a trade mission and at a conference of Mumbai business leaders, Sadiq Khan delivered a familiar message in an unfamiliar language. London And it's very important I say this sir, to you. London is open is the mayor's mantra. His grandparents were born in India. He believes his fluency in Hindi gives London a leg up. We've got something that Paris, uh, Madrid, Barcelona, Berlin, Frankfurt hasn't got, which is a mayor whose family is originally from India and uh, Pakistan, who understands the emotional connection between uh, uh, our city and uh, India. The Indian authorities are providing armed guards for the mayor's party. Like London, Mumbai has been a terrorist target. This was day one of a six-day tour to six different cities in India and Pakistan. Tomorrow, the mayor will unveil a joint film partnership between London and Bollywood. Simon Harris, ITV News, Mumbai. It is a message the mayor wants the world to know that London is open for business and will be even after Brexit. That's why Sadiq Khan has earmarked on a week, embarked on a week-long trade mission to India and Pakistan and is why he was so keen to take aim at the government as he stopped in Mumbai today. He criticised the change in visa rules which make it harder for Indian students to work in Britain and he called for Theresa May to negotiate a separate Brexit deal for the capital. Are they just words from the mayor or can he have a real influence on the capital standing in global economics? We're from India. Here's our political correspondent, Simon Harris. When London's mayor goes on tour, polite conversation and diplomatic niceties are the order of the day. Mumbai and London are like twin sisters separated at birth. He and the Mumbai region's first minister swapped compliments about each other's cities. But Sadiq Khan's words were a lot harsher when he spoke about the government's veto on Indian students staying in the UK to work. The British Prime Minister, Theresa May, got it badly wrong with her decision to close this route a few years ago. Ragi Kutikat and Apita Gokli both lived in London until their student visas ran out. Both wanted to stay on. For Ragi, there was the added disappointment of not being a volunteer during the Olympics. That was one opportunity that I still miss, uh, that I, how I wish I could have been part of the, the, uh, uh, the Olympics and, you know, had volunteered there and had to, uh, had to come back. I get it. I get that, that immigration numbers were supposed to keep down, but, you know, Indians will be only adding value to any economy that we go to. And I think it would have been a great opportunity to actually explore that and be somebody else and be the change that I thought I could be. The mayor believes Brexit has changed everything and the government should once again embrace students from this part of the world. Sadiq Khan is not the first London mayor to try to force a change in visa policy. Not the first mayor to use India as a backdrop and an argument to try to persuade ministers to have a rethink. Five years ago, Boris Johnson was in Mumbai and Delhi making the identical case for post-study visas. India has a glorious tradition of sending students to London uh, from Nehru, from Gandhi, from onwards, and uh, we want to make sure that we preserve that. But if a Conservative mayor couldn't convince Conservative ministers, what chance does a Labour mayor have? Do you think you're a better advocate for the case than Boris Johnson? Well, I think history will uh, tell us which one of us is better at their job at convincing the government what to do, but also I think the reality is things have moved on. Despite the visa row, the mayor was eager to reinforce his main message that London is open for business. One deal announced today was said to be the biggest ever TV co-production between India and the UK. 30 years ago, MMK's novel about life in the British Raj was turned into a TV miniseries. Now it's to be remade as a 30-part drama costing more than £100 million. 
production is all in Rajasthan and, and somewhere that looks like Afghanistan in 1879. Uh, and, and then we post-produce in London. We'll be doing music and, and full post-production uh, services in London. There was one somber moment during the mayor's final day in Mumbai when he laid flowers at the memorial to victims of the 2008 terror attack who were all killed in the luxury Taj Palace Hotel. And Simon joins us tonight from Delhi, the next stop on the mayor's visit to India. Uh, Simon, developments tonight on Brexit. What has the mayor been calling for? Yes, Lucrezia, the mayor's trip to Asia is in a large part linked to Brexit. It is, of course, an old-fashioned trade mission. And the mayor was en route from Mumbai to Delhi towards the airport when news broke of this possible solution to the very difficult uh, problem of the Northern Ireland border. And it is a suggestion from the government that it might allow Northern Ireland to remain in the single market and the customs union. Now, that's likely to be scuppered, or at least uh, it will not go down well with the government's coalition partners, the DUP. But as far as the mayor was concerned, it was music, the mere suggestion was music to his ears. The government should give the entire country uh, membership of the single market, uh, membership of the customs union and the cast iron guarantee to EU citizens. If it is the case, uh, and it appears it is, the gov government's accepted the principle that part of the country can have uh, that arrangement, that I think that should include London as well as Northern Ireland. Tomorrow the mayor will be focusing on another of the issues close to his heart, pollution. The air in Delhi is particularly toxic. It was bad enough in Mumbai where the mayor admitted to me today that he's having to use his asthma pump more often, more frequently during the day than he does at home. Tomorrow he'll be here where we've seen pictures of cricketers wearing masks because of the foul air. And after that, the next stop on the six-day six-city tour. Oh, apologies there. We seem to have just lost Simon Harris, but he's just finishing there in Delhi. Many thanks. Now, it's been one of the mayor's big promises to clean up London's polluted air. And on day three of Sadiq Khan's trip to India, he saw firsthand just how bad it could get if nothing is done to try and make this city greener. He was in Delhi, where smog is a daily problem, so much so that a cricket test match had to be halted this week because players were struggling to breathe. Well, from Delhi, here's our political correspondent, Simon Harris. The Indian capital is no place for anyone struggling to breathe. Distinctive landmarks like the Oshkadam temple are viewed through a toxic soup of polluted air. The Hindu site was the first stop of the day during a visit by London's mayor. Sadiq Khan suffers from asthma and it wasn't long before he began to feel the full effect of the Delhi smog. <coughs> it's, I mean, it's, I'm starting to feel it a bit now. Uh, I've left my asthma pump in my other jacket and stuff so I haven't had a chance to use it. But you do, um, you do notice it. Uh, it is noticeable. Uh, I was fine this morning, fine in the hotel, but it's, uh, when you're out and about, you do feel it and you can see it. Delhi is hosting a test match between India and Sri Lanka. The game was briefly halted at the weekend when Sri Lankan players began to be affected. Since then, the Sri Lankans have added face masks to their kit. Even today, the discomfort felt by some players was evident. Delhi has ambitions to host both the Olympic Games and the World Cup. There's a growing realisation here that pollution is damaging not just to the health of its citizens, but also to its reputation. Delhi's population of more than 20 million is being forced to endure conditions similar to the great smog of London 65 years ago. The World Health Organisation recently ranked Delhi as one of the most polluted global cities. So what's the level of PM 2.5 guys right in the air around us? 85, it's fluctuating. In a school playground, London's mayor watched as pupils were given a lesson in how to use a mobile phone app to alert them to dangerous levels of pollution. In the past three years, this has become an essential part of the curriculum. The air pollution has gone very bad in Delhi, especially. And um, that's why this project is very important because when they learn at this age, they'll remember forever and they'll carry it forward and probably in future to come this air pollution will not exist anymore. Delhi's growing population and increasing wealth has fueled an explosion in car ownership. It's a problem acknowledged by members of the government like Commerce Minister Suresh Prabhu. Air quality is of great concern to all of us. Air quality is of great concern to all of us, he told the mayor. 
When pollution levels rise, schools ask pupils to stay at home or cover their mouths. Face masks are a common sight. But many people here take poor air as a fact of life, like Divya Murti Swami, a Hindu monk who moved to Delhi from Eltham in South London. It's like a person gets uh, accustomed to the British weather and the, the clouds and everything, and it's just part of life. Sadiq Khan believes London's poor air quality puts him in no position to lecture. But he is keen to work with other polluted cities, like Delhi, as part of a global alliance. A trial of new high-tech sensors at pollution hotspots in London is just one idea he's offering to share. Simon Harris, ITV News, Delhi. Next tonight to one of the world's most hostile borders and one that no British politician has crossed in a generation. But today, Mayor Sadiq Khan stepped from India into Pakistan, describing himself as a pioneer as he did so. The Foreign Office had advised him not to make the journey, but he said it was something he was determined to do, following in the footsteps of his grandparents. Royal political correspondent Simon Harris was with the mayor on his journey today. Amritsar's Golden Temple is a place of pilgrimage for Sikhs, a magnet for tourists and a must for visiting VIPs. Sadiq Khan's six-day, six-city tour reached the halfway point here today. London's Muslim mayor came to pay his respects at this, the holiest of Sikh sites. The mayor was once again mobbed by local media as he toured the Golden Temple. But the mayor's journey today was also an emotional and personal one. I can't um, not pretend that it's not emotional for me as somebody whose uh, grandparents, uh, both sides, forefathers, foremothers are from this part of the world. Uh, you know, this was a, a, a place where my family came from. In the temple kitchen, the mayor stirred things. He joined temple officials for a meal and then helped do the washing up. But he also had a political point to make in Amritsar. In the garden at Jallian Waller Bag, British troops opened fire on unarmed Sikh protesters in 1919. <laughs> no one knows for sure how many died, certainly more than 300. The mayor thinks the British government yeah. should apologise. I think it's appropriate to recognise the wrong that we've uh, done, uh, not simply to draw a line underneath this, but also to recognise that actually uh, we've not always been great in the past. Next stop after Amritsar would be the India-Pakistan border and a highly unusual land crossing by a politician, apparently in defiance of Foreign Office advice. It's been quite difficult to, to organise, Simon. I won't pretend it's not. I mean, the, the, the advice we've received from the Foreign Office and others is this is not what politicians do, it's not in a generation. Uh, can anybody remember a British politician doing both countries in one trip? Nobody can tell me of an example of a British politician crossing the border this way, but you know, we're Londoners and we are pioneers. Relations between India and Pakistan make it a sensitive and tense border. India doesn't allow filming. Oh! But on the Pakistan side, they put on a very public show to welcome the man who proudly describes himself as the son of a Pakistani bus driver. Home staff London, mate. Uh, but you know, it's good to be in, in Pakistan. Uh, it's good to come from India. If anyone was in any doubt that the mayor might be a target for terrorists in Pakistan, the road trip to Lahore said it all. This was a heavily armed police convoy made up of around 30 cars, vans, an ambulance and a fire engine. In the city, Sadiq Khan was determined to visit the Bad Shahi Mosque. What followed was a solemn ceremony at a religious site, watched over by troops carrying Kalashnikovs. This is the level of security the mayor can expect over the next three days. It's a far cry from the handful of police protection officers who guard him in London. But the Pakistani authorities are taking no chances with their guest. Simon Harris, ITV News, Lahore. Sadiq Khan has ruled himself out of becoming the UK's first Muslim Prime Minister. The mayor told ITV London he has no ambitions to ever move to Downing Street or become leader of the Labour Party. He's in Pakistan where diplomatic sources say his rise from humble beginnings makes him a very, very popular in the country. Well, from Islamabad, our political correspondent Simon Harris reports. What you've been doing... For London's mayor, this was the political climax of his six-day Asian tour, a meeting with Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahid Abbasi in the capital Islamabad. Sadiq Khan has been fated here with political leaders eager to meet Britain's first Muslim mayor. 
One British diplomatic source said the mayor was huge here. His rise from humble beginnings to a top political position is all but impossible in Pakistan. Pakistan television has been reporting his views on President Trump's decision to declare Jerusalem the capital of Israel. It wasn't just the Prime Minister who wanted to meet Sadiq Khan. Foreign Minister Khawaja Mohammed, Pakistan's Boris Johnson, was also prepared to make time for the mayor. Mr. Sadiq Khan's uh, being uh, the mayor of uh, uh, London, it's, it's a matter of pride for us, a matter of great honour for us. Ever since he was elected mayor last year, Sadiq Khan has been tipped as a future Labour leader and Britain's first Muslim Prime Minister. But speaking to ITV News in Islamabad today, he ruled himself out of both. I never had ambitions in the first place and I've got no ambitions now. But if the opportunity arose, would you put yourself forward to be Labour leader? No, I love being the mayor. I think I've got a great job and uh, there's no other job that I'd, I'd want. Surely you'd like to be Prime Minister one day? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Uh, I love being the mayor. Why give up a job I love? to do a job I don't want. Are you ruling yourself out? I'm absolutely ruling myself out. Forever? Forever. And so how long will you be mayor for? As long as the people around want me to be there, mayor. Uh, I think there's nothing wrong with being the mayor for 30 years and uh, looking forward to it. How concerned are you about what Donald Trump said yesterday about Jerusalem? I'm very concerned about what President Trump said about uh, uh, Jerusalem. Uh, anybody who understands the history of that part of the Middle East understands the concerns people have in relation to East Jerusalem will find it astonishing uh, that President Trump has said what he did. I think it makes peace uh, less likely, not more likely. Sadiq Khan describes his trip to Pakistan as a trade mission. It may well help London's chances of doing business, but it's also given his international profile a huge boost. Simon Harris, ITV News, Islamabad. So it would seem a fair few EU citizens in London are pleased with today's developments. But what about the mayor? Well, Sadiq Khan has made no secret of his desire to see the capital remain in the single market, even if that comes in the form of a special deal. And on the final day of his trip to Pakistan, he told our political correspondent, Simon Harris, his focus remains on securing growth and jobs for London. Sadiq Khan's final day in Pakistan, and once again his hosts mounted a substantial security operation. As the mayor's convoy swept into the grounds of a mausoleum in Karachi, armed police and soldiers were there to make sure he came to no harm. This is the final resting place of the country's founding father, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, and the mayor, whose parents emigrated from Pakistan to England, came to pay his respects. Even in these surroundings, the mayor found it hard to resist his mantra. We're here to spread the message from London. It's a very simple message, and the message can be summed up in three words. London is open. London subkiliya kolabaha. The Pakistani authorities have left nothing to chance during the three days he's been here. The mayor has been subject to the sort of security more familiar to heads of state. It is a measure of the security threat here in Karachi that the mayor was advised not to stay in a hotel. Instead, he spent his final night in Pakistan in the relative safety of this secure compound at the British Deputy High Commission. When the mayor delivered his London is Open speech at Karachi's Habib University, students took it to mean one thing. For me, uh, as a student, it really means that I can apply for further opportunities there for my masters or either my, for my further, further studies, I can, I can apply to London. Visas are available to students from Pakistan, but because their country is not considered low risk, they may have to take part in a video interview. By now, news had reached Karachi that Britain was moving into the next stage of negotiations with the EU. The reality is uh, it appears we're leaving the EU. Uh, but the least damaging thing to London and to uh, our country is for us to remain in the single market, remain in the customs union, uh, even though we've left the EU. Sadiq Khan believes he's been batting for London this week. His trade mission has taken him to six cities in six days, but now it's over. Simon Harris, ITV News, Karachi.